to me. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. You see, you see? Oh, Martha, I'm glad to be here. Hello. We're here today to discuss the changing roles of women in the United States. We have with us today two distinguished women of Congress, Patsy Wink and Martha Griffith. In recent years, women in the United States have begun to organize themselves to improve their status in society. What do you think has caused this woman's movement? I think that they are much better educated. So many have been forced by economic necessity to go to work. And when they went to work, they discovered the discriminations against them. After discovering this, they discover the discriminations against them as homemakers. I think this is true, for instance, in Social Security. The discriminations against women in that call. Women only now are beginning to realize that there is inequality in the law, and have brought, and women have brought these matters into the attention of people at home, and this has created a greater interest. Now, why doesn't the Tax Writing Committee of Congress do something about this? Well, we need more women on the committee. We've been working very hard, but you see, this is why the discrimination lodges. I have, tr I have tried to stress this whole business in a man's mind so that they would appreciate what we're com complaining about. A woman working all her life and not being able to leave her benefits to her husband is a discrimination against the man. Bars! But you see, the men in the Congress say, well, I don't need my wife's support. I'm capable of working. And it's this mentality that prevents them from seeing the basic law is wrong and that women should not be taxed if they can't leave the same benefits to their husbands. We're working on it, but we're just at the beginning stages of this whole movement, reawakening the sense of equality in this country. One of the main purposes of the movement to give true equality to women and men and not just women? Of course, that is what the Equal Rights Amendment would do. For instance, in this country, the way for a woman to be supported at taxpayers' expense is to get rid of her husband and to take her children for welfare. But her husband couldn't do that, no matter how great his need, which is, of course, nonsense. You introduced a very far-reaching bill in Congress involving women's rights, rights in many areas. Why would such legislation be necessary in the ERA is ratified? Well, it was introduced largely pending the ratification. It seemed to me that we still needed to focus on the major inequalities that existed in the federal law so that people would not forget the basic reason that the ERA started in the first place. As Martha indicated, the ERA is ratified the changes that we will just have to make. In my state, for instance, we were the first to ratify the ERA. We have to make a change and make a systemic look chapter by chapter in our revised laws to make all the necessary changes. So what you're saying is that the Equal Rights Amendments apply to federal law? It applies also to state law. It applies at a local level too. The school board can no longer say that in a case of depression, first, all women teachers will be fired or married women will be fired and then will fire the men. It applies to any place where the government acts but it would not apply to privately owned businesses. What is the United States doing in this regard? We have the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And of course the Higher Education Bill of several years ago applied to women. Would you discuss that, Ms. Mink? Well, that is in reference to any policies and regulations and hiring foreign policies to our education departments and the local communities as well as universities. This is a very important step forward and quite complicated. There is a growing awareness among educators that they haven't been entirely fair. Not only in who becomes an administrator and who gets to be principal, generally in the way that they have administered educational policies. I'm fully in support of the, of the amendment we've put into the higher education bill. Thanks for coming. And we've been speaking with two distinguished women of Congress in the United States, Patsy Mink of Hawaii and Martha Griffith of Michigan, about the subjects of women's rights, a subject which all members of the state of the United Nations will be focusing on during 1975 International Women's Year. Stop, never mind. Go ah!